unfortunately, and we need to uh, finish a few minutes earlier because of the uh, plenary session that should start sharp at nine. Uh, allow me to introduce myself first. I am uh, Dono, uh, Dona Abdurazakova, uh, Regional Gender and Social Protection Advisor to uh, FAO Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia. Thank you for being with us at this early hour. I uh, would like to invite Mr. Nabil Gangi, Deputy Regional Representative and Officer in Charge of FAO Office for Europe and Central Asia to open this session without any further delay. Mr. Gangi. Thank you, Donald. Good morning, dear panelists, dear esteemed guests. Great pleasure to welcome you all to Budapest and actually to our European Commission on Agriculture first side event on gender and advancing gender equality in the region's agri food systems. Gender and many ask us time and time again why gender? Have you changed your theme? And we say, no, we're still talking about food and alleviating poverty. However, to in order to attain efficient, resilient, and nature-positive agri-food system, it is inseparable from the empowerment of women, particularly rural women, and closing the gender gap. 70% of the world food production is provided by family farmers. And women play a key role in this, directly and indirectly, whether as paid or unpaid laborers on their own farms, contributing also as processors, agri-entrepreneurs, production, and food consumers. As such, they are the main contributor to food security and poverty reduction. And this is why we come time and time again and talk about gender. Throughout the world, rural, rural women work longer hours and are my, more likely to suffer from poverty and face a number of challenges related to gender, re reducing their access to agricultural assets and social benefits, and limit their potential and the potential of food production as economic agents and, the, and their capacity to, to reap full benefits of their work. In Europe and Central Asia, as in lots of parts of the world, women are becoming the backbone of societies and play important role in sustaining families and rural communities. Average gender-related indicators in the region are the most advanced globally, indeed. And let's again come and ask us, why do we come back to gender, particularly in a region that is quite advanced? However, social practices and regulations often impede women, including in our region, impede women in exercising their rights and gender-based discrimination persists. Despite rural women's high education levels and high economic activity rates, they enjoy less access to productive assets, services, and decent employment opportunities. Rural women in the region have less access to innovative technologies and agriculture approaches when compared to men, which contributes to the gender pay gap, with women earning between 60 to 85% of men's salaries and having lower access to decent jobs and of farm employment. The status of rural women is exacerbated by a double and triple burden of domestic and reproductive work, which overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly falls on women's shoulders. Hence the term time poverty, which significantly limits rural women's life choices and opportunities for engaging in paid economic activities, education, and professional development. Closing the gender gap would generate significant gains 
for the agriculture sector and for the society, and not only for agriculture sector. The state of food and agriculture in 2011, flagship publication of FAO, demonstrates for the first time that should women have the same access to productive resources as men, farm yields could increase by 20 to 30%. The new FAO report on the status of women, which was launched in April 2023, this year, stated that the closing the gender gap, there could be a one-off increase in global GDP by approximately 1 trillion US dollars. It's a 1% increase in global GDP. And hence, the number of food insecure people could be reduced by 45 million. And that is why we talk time and time again about gender. This is the reason. We have not changed our theme. Our theme is food and alleviating poverty, yet gender is a key element to us reaching this objective. Study after study has shown that there is no effective development strategy in which women are marginalized. No, but they have to play a central role. And there's a positive correlation between national GDPs and gender equality levels. FAA recognizes that persisting inequalities between women and men are a major obstacle to agricultural production and rural development. Access to knowledge, information, technical skills can empower women economically by allowing them to acquire productive assets, improve their financial literacy, and increase their decision-making power. When this happens, women make better investments in nutrition, health, and education, not only for themselves, but for their families, leading to an improved all-round well-being and quality of life for themselves, their families, and their communities. FAO's regional office for Europe and Central Asia and its country offices throughout the region are committed to assist women smallholders by engaging them in more profitable value chains and providing support to women's businesses and agricultural practices. Through better access to land, bank loans, productive resources, markets, and business development services. This is a key for more fair, for a fairer, equitable, and productive agri-food system with lasting positive effects on societies. Allow me to express my appreciation to the esteemed panelists for accepting our invitation today. We are looking forward to hearing from your valuable experiences and thoughts that would undoubtedly help us in strengthening our partnerships and assist member states in the region to jointly advance these important themes. Despite persistent, old and emerging challenges, conflicts and crises in the region. So on behalf of FAO, allow me to express my gratitude to the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry of Turkey, to the Union of Hungarian Women and the Nieleni International Food Sovereignty movement for partnering with us in organizing this event and sharing with us best practices and technical knowledge. I warmly welcome you all and wish you a productive and inspiring session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nabil. Indeed, uh, food systems uh, transformation and uh, affordable healthy diets are not possible without full and uh, meaningful participation of women who are key contributors to agricultural production uh, cycle. However, despite their substantive uh, role and contributions to the food systems, rural women in Europe and Central Asia, uh, they face significant challenges in accessing resources, including uh, knowledge and innovation. Strong partnerships uh, are a prerequisite for addressing 
these issues in the context of increasing shocks and crises. And at this session, we focus on the importance of a common agenda and partnership building between key stakeholders, including ministries of agriculture, rural advisory services, civil society organizations, private sector, and gender expert community. In closing the gaps in assessing accessibility, knowledge, and innovation. Our objective today is to share some good and promising practices and examples of collaborative efforts in facilitating access to resources for women working in farms and uh, thus contributing to achieving inclusive and equitable agri-food systems. Our esteemed speakers, panelists, uh, will represent cases from Turkey, from Hungary, from Italy, Ireland, and from the whole region. So without further delay, um, I would like to give a floor to our first panelist who will be joining us online from Ankara, Turkey. Uh, before that, I um, would like to say that, yeah, Nabil, we know that you have to <laughs> observe some protocol issues, but we continue our work. Our session is recorded and uh, we will uh, uh, we will be disseminating uh, its um, uh, footage in the networks uh, with all our uh, partners, counterparts, stakeholders. Miss um, Asli Chavosh, who is our first speaker today, she is uh, head of the working group on rural women and is a di directorate general of Agricultural Research and Policies of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry of Turkey. Ms. Chavush is also a national coordinator of the ongoing regional project that covers Turkey, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. It is implemented under the framework of FAO Turkey Partnership Program and uh, is uh, called Leaving No One Behind, Greater Involvement and Empowerment of Rural Women. Uh, we will be uh, listening to experiences of the ministry to addressing these issues on the ground. And uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Ms. Uh, Chavush to uh, describe us how uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and actually what it's doing to reach rural women and address their needs in terms of improving their access to technical knowledge and skills. Um, Asli Hanum, are you with us? Hello, good morning. Yes, dear Donna, I'm here. I'm with you. I wish you a very fruitful session, first of all. Well, I am... Uh, Joining from the Department of Education and Publication of the Ministry of Agriculture, I'm an agricultural engineer. I've been working in the rural for 10 years for better development of women. We have been working as a unit in this field for over a decade. The purpose of our decade is economic and social empowerment of women, uh, attain gender equality, improve entrepreneurship and employment. For this purpose, we provide education and extension services uh, to the community and women in the field, and we support uh, cooperative organizations in agricultural business lines. We support and encourage women entrepreneurs and uh, we carry on some projects to socioeconomically empower women. As you have just suggested, uh, well, uh, protecting family farming and making it sustainable is a goal that we have, a major goal that we have. That is why we provide uh, education, publication extension services to youth and farmer, uh, youth and women farmers. And yes, when we are engaged in all these activities, we uh, follow a certain method. Of course, let me describe this methodology, the pathway that we follow. In Turkey, we have uh, uh, 81 provinces and 
922 district offices. That's a huge network that we uh, are on top of uh, as the ministry. And our uh, activities focuses on women and the development and empowerment of rural women. For this purpose, we have extension experts working in the offices, rural offices of the Ministry of Agriculture. First, they uh, um, take an inventory of the problems and then they check what the uh, what the uh, educational needs are. Annually, they prepare and design programs and the uh, educational needs of women are taken into consideration when the extension and uh, education uh, staff are, are planning their training activities for a period of one year. Women farmers are engaged in each and every stage of agriculture production. It's necessary to improve their skills and knowledge that is also contributing to the quality of pro production and the quantity of production. So in terms of plant production and animal production, uh, uh, we try to improve their knowledge via demonstrations, uh, uh, field days, uh, uh, and other training sessions. We provide education training and uh, extension services in all 81 provinces of Turkey. Also, in order to modernize the social life of women and in order to empower them socioeconomically, we also help them with uh, household economy. Uh, uh, they are trained about nutrition, child development, education, uh, the, the management of the household, handicrafts, uh, and many other occupations. So we provide these uh, uh, training and education services in all 81 provinces of Turkey. However, we know that women's empowerment cannot be achieved just one ministry. So we all recognize this fact. We collaborate with different uh, uh, public institutions that are working for and with women. We also collaborate with the private sector and related agencies of the UN. We have collaborations with all these uh, partners in order to empower women. We have FAO, FTPP2 program, and this program includes a project that you have just referred to. This is just an example of our collaborations. Uh, within the scope of the FAO Turkey Partnership Program, we are implementing this project that you heard from dear Donna. The title is Leaving No One Behind, Greater Involvement and Empowerment of Rural Women in Turkey and Central Asia. The goal uh, of the project, uh, in fact, uh, can be easily guessed, but let me start with the background of this project. As you know, women hold a major share and play a major role in agriculture. And I can say that 50% uh, of all agricultural roles are undertaken by women. And however, they have limited access to resources and services and employment opportunities. So as you suggested, increasing their access to such elements uh, uh, increases agricultural productivity and food security. That is why uh, in order to enhance women farmers' capacity, in order to ensure a better understanding of equal opportunities, and in order to project all these on the practices, we identify the needs, uh, because adoption of such approaches will also contribute to attainment of the sustainable development goals. Uh, reduction of poverty, gender equality uh, are part of sustainable development goals. So we make references to such indicators and also climate, environment, and uh, environmentally smart trainings. They're all part of one whole that is named the sustainable development goals. We work in line with these goals. Additionally, the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry already had some vast experience regarding a national action plan for empowerment of rural women. It has already been providing some intense trainings to women farmers and entrepreneurs, and it has already been supporting women-led cooperatives and young farmers. So we wanted to transfer this experience with the help of this FAO project. There is one more uh, uh, background item for this project. And, uh, uh, in fact, our unit had already carried out two projects in partnership with FAO. One was about statistics in that we worked with Dear Donna. And also uh, for institutional capacity building, we conducted another project as well. In that project, uh, and we uh, just created a module uh, to be used for our real extension staff. So they would use this module in order uh, uh, to uh, provide better extension services to the rural. 
So in the light of all the these background items, we designed and formulated the project and the objective of the project, in fact, was to enhance women. And in order to implement gender responsive programs, so we aimed at uh, enhancing institutional mechanisms and capacities. We also aim at enhancing rural women's capacity with respect to agricultural entrepreneurship and business development through engagement in the value chains and improved access to markets, information, and skills. And uh, we also aim at achieving regional dialogue and exchanging good practices regarding sustainable and inclusive agricultural and forestry activities, which promote rural women's entrepreneurship and women's empowerment in the context of Agenda 2030. Well, the project components are as follows. Enhanced institutional mechanisms and capacities, regional dialogue, an exchange of good practices, and in line with and on base of all these, enhancing women's capacity. Main project activities. Well, we wanted to uh, improve, improve the capacity for policymakers and practitioners in relation to agriculture and food security. And also we wanted to support institutional frameworks for implementation of the related policies. And that's why uh, we would contribute to the creation of an enabling environment for improving the economic conditions of rural women. Another objective was to set up gender units in the pilot provinces identified. So these gender units were something that we really needed. Uh, well, of course, we uh, 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 had been carrying out some uh, uh, women's improvement uh, uh, activities. Uh, but uh, these activities were single and individual activities. They were not really very much interconnected. So in, un under the gender units, we would uh, uh, ensure uh, uh, some uh, integration. We set up the gender units with this purpose. Uh, and in fact, if we are convinced that they are operational perfectly, then they will be scaled up uh, to the regional level and then to the whole national level. So uh, one of our aim, uh, aims is to propose that these gender units are functioning excellently and uh, uh, they should be available in all 81 provinces of Turkey. And we are going to propose it so that it will be a part of the policy paper. One activity is, in fact, in order to implement gender responsive agriculture and rural development policies and programs, uh, regional workshops uh, will be organized to be participated by the Ministry of Agriculture of Turkey, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and a regional platform will be created where challenges, best practices, and political solutions will be shared. Participants from other countries will also have the opportunity to share their experiences and best practices to cover the needs of rural women. And there thus an awareness raising campaign will be organized to uh, 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 create a regional and promote regional success stories that can inspire women in the region. Let me briefly describe you the gender units that we have. The objectives of the gender unit is to empower women in particular rural women, uh, uh, step up economic roles of women that they play in agricultural development, prioritize resolution of the problems encountered by rural and farmer women, and bring out women entrepreneurs, women in employment, and leader producer women in various projects, and thus scale down the migration from rural to urban, and create opportunities for women and youth so that they can keep living where they are. And let me tell you how we formulated the establishment and foundation of the gender units. We had three pilot provinces, and with the consent from the provincial governor's offices, gender units were established. And uh, taking into consideration the actual texture and agricultural activities of that province, 
uh, with a gender neutral approach, minimum staff members were assigned to the gender units. And if in the provincial agriculture directors, there was already a sociologist, the sociologist would also be included in the team because it will be necessary to make a sociologic assessment of the women. It will be necessary to carry out demographic studies and they need to be actively involved in all these provincial uh, uh, activities. That is why we uh, engage the sociologist. And under the coordination of the Division Director for Coordination Agricultural Data, uh, we uh, set up another structure consisting of a unit hand and technical staff members, and we uh, have taken the necessary actions in order to physically strengthen the capacity of these units. And, you know, all these are for improving the institutional capacity because uh, these people will be training uh, the rural women and uh, in order to improve uh, the institutional capacity. Uh, uh, we conducted uh, 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 some uh, uh, training sessions and uh, uh, gender responsive uh, uh, extension services were mainly the topic of these training sessions. Uh, maybe you know, very recently we, uh, uh, I mean, Turkey was hit by a disaster, uh, particularly earthquake, and a disaster response was part of the training sessions that we provided. Sustainable development goals were likewise the part of uh, uh, the training topics. I'm just giving some examples from the different topics that we covered in the training. Well, uh, the gender units had the following operated, operating principles. Drew up a gender response work plan and executed in line with uh, the provincial extension programs. In the uh, provinces, uh, uh, we worked uh, on uh, the uh, needs of women and the action plans at the provincial level. In uh, uh, the provinces, we checked the value chain chains. And uh, 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 currently, we are working on creating some value chains that can be really representative for the provinces. Other principles include conducting an ease analysis and a, a reporting of the same, create a network in the three provinces, formulate projects to ensure local development, and formulate projects to contribute to employment through collaboration, organize workshops, panels, field days, and produce reports of the conducted activities. Miss. At the end of three years, we're going to conduct an impact analysis and the outputs will be shared with the ministry. Well, here are our work domains, education and training. It's a priority, of course. Entrepreneurship employment is another work domain. Increasing the product added values and marketing strategies and cooperative organizations. Ms. Chosh. Yeah, thank you so much. I think it's a very interesting case, especially about creating uh, gender units at provincial level, specifically to reach uh, rural women and help them to acquire new skills or enhance those that they already have. Uh, unfortunately, we have very limited time and we have uh, several more cases we listened to before uh, we also have some um, exchange of opinions and we need to go further. Thanks a lot. I hope you will stay online because there might be questions to you, Ms. Chavosh. Um, our next panelist is um, uh, Ms. Margit Batiani Schmidt, uh, president of the Union of Hungarian Women, Margot. Um, uh, aims to empower Hungarian rural women to become economically independent and uh, to improve quality of life of their families, of their communities. And uh, the Union of Hungarian Women as a non-governmental organization has a consultative status with uh, ECASOC 
And uh, uh, Margot herself is an active member of the biggest network of European farmers, Copa Cojega. Uh, it's a women's committee and um, is an uh, expert for uh, many more European um, institutes. And uh, Margot is accompanied by Miss uh, Monica Mejarosh, also a founding member of the union, but uh, although in the past uh, Monica worked with um, state administration, now she's a business lady and um, she manages her own uh, consultancy firm. And additionally, she is actively involved in many projects supported by the European Commission that contribute to the development of small and medium enterprises and startups. So the floor is yours. Uh, please um, observe <laughs> the elements that we have. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you, Dono. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hungary, welcome to Budapest. And thanks for the FAO that this possibility that uh, we can be here in this side event. So let me introduce a little bit about the Union of Hungarian Women Association. It was established in 2013 with 17 funding members and there were supporting male members to 10%. Uh, we currently reach more than 5,000 people directly and participate around uh, 200 events every year. We finance our programs through both national and international funds and, and applications. Our main goal is to encourage rural Hungarian women to embrace their role in the family, to improve their quality of life, to protect their physical and mental health, and to inspire them to become entrepreneurs. At last but not least, we dedicated 2022 to the 100th uh, anniversary of the death of the first Hungarian female physician, Hugo Nai Vilma, within the framework of our cooperation with UDESCO. So uh, Dono has already mentioned that we are working with uh, many European institutes. This is the COFACE, the Women Entrepreneurs uh, Platform, uh, the Copa Cogega, and we have cooperation agreement with the FAO, we had cooperation agreement. And uh, the next one about the activities in this year, what we did, I think that the, the main uh, event was the CSW 67. It was an online uh, side event, and that was the title that Can Rural Women Be Digital Nomads? And there was the main topics, innovation and technological change, education in the digital age, creating equal opportunities and empowering women and girls. The following countries were represented, of course, uh, United States of America, Uzbekistan, Belgium, Cyprus and Hungary. The Union of Hungarian Women is focusing on the empowerment of rural women. Women are the key actors in the management of the sustainability in their communities, in their families. And this is what we at the Union of Hungarian Women put in the focus of our work. We look at women as the key figures in helping to create a sustainable future by educating their children and their communities. What kind of uh, problems do we have to face as women in agriculture and social status? First is to access the control of uh, resources, then the lack of rights to own or acquire land, then third is the poverty, and the fourth is the access to the education. And uh, in the fall of 2021, we created the Talent A Education and Supporting Program for Women Farmers with the international agricultural company, Corteva AgriScience. This is uh, origin from Uni United States. The Talent A Program aims to provide a wide range of professional, educational, and financial opportunities for Hungarian women farmers. Due to its huge success, we are delighted to have launched the program again for the second time this year. What is, the, what is it about? This is an online education program, 16 lectures. It's about the creating communities, negotiations, business plan, presentation techniques, agricultural digitalization, cyber safety, food security, investor looking for them. It was Zoom-based, uh, and at the end, they had to write a micro-project. 
There were, for example, this year, 29 people as an application. It was about from 15 counties of Hungary. There are in, uh, there are in Hungary 19 counties and from the, from the east uh, and north side of Hungary. The age of the application, uh, again, applications about more than 30, two or three children they are at home. Diverse background, producing healthy products, set up a herb farm, making cheese, offer countryside tourism services, and growing veggies and drying fruits. The award ceremony will be in October on the United Nations International Day of Rural Women. The first, second, and the third prize from the 11 application with the micro projects, totally up to 1,000 US dollar support and private coaching. With the program is the bottom-up approach. We help the participants to, to solve smaller problems and integrate it as a whole and complete the solution. The bigger picture lead them to the goals they set. These are some pictures from the last year's program. And one of the winners was the so-called spicy girl who engaged in producing herbs. Another winner, I would like to highlight the other winner who, who produced fruits and was able to use the price to buy a fruit drying machine. So now I would like to thank you for the kind attention and I give the flow to Monica. Yeah, and it, uh, it didn't go. Thank you. For <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Margot. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank for Dono for the invitation, because as uh, Margot have just had just said, uh, it's our pleasure to give a visibility for our work, uh, which is not only on national level, but uh, it's also on international level as well. I'm going to give a presentation, a short one about the uh, EU project uh, we are a partner in. We are the only Hungarian partner in the so-called Gaia project, uh, granting access to employment and entrepreneurship in agriculture for women. It's an EU-funded project and uh, it's led by a Cyprus partner. Uh, the project timeline is between of uh, 2022 June and 2025 uh, June. It's a long project uh, with a total <laughs> of 1.5 million euro and the partners uh, contribute with 20% of own resource. As it was just said, the project is an ongoing one and it's a forward looking project uh, aiming to improve the education for rural women related to agriculture so they can join whether they would like to set up their own company or they would like to be employed uh, in the rural uh, areas also and uh, if they would like to deal with agro-tourism or agricultural food products it's also welcomed. We would like to inspire, mentor, empower, educate, and train women in agriculture. And that's why this uh, transnational collaboration uh, take place uh, between 13 partners from 10 different countries. Uh, the 13 partners are quite different uh, because we have higher education partner, technological backgrounded partner, ICT company, the Copa Kojaga itself, and also the Union of Hungarian Women Association. The partners are from different countries, uh, from Belgium, through the Netherlands, via Hungary, to Norway, Spain, Slovenia, and so on. We would like to create a pan-European digital ecosystem. In order to do this, uh, we map already the needs of women who are neither in employment nor in education. And we would like to develop a digital platform with a digital app and uh, to provide a holistic training for them. Of course, uh, it should be accompanied by a physical appearance of the ladies, of mentors and participants. So we will organize a boot camp as well in the Czech Republic. And then at the end of the project, we will give a feedback on EU level 
uh, this work package is led by the Union of Hungarian Women in cooperation with the Copa Kojaga. The target group is the women, of course, who are neither in employment nor in education and training, living in rural areas. Meanwhile, uh, of course, women with migrant background can join, higher education students, higher education staff, and vocational, educational, and training trainers and professionals can join as well. This is the direct target group. Meanwhile, we also have indirect target group, of course. These are agribusiness associations, local communities, uh, chamber of commerces, and so on. It's quite a uh, range, uh, quite wide uh, range of uh, stakeholders, I would say. The activities uh, are also uh, well structured in order to support women in the rural areas. We have two horizontal work packages. One is dedicated for the project management. The other is for the communication. And as I have said, we will organize a, a mobile app, a digital platform, and an innovation bootcamp for them and we will give a feedback uh, for uh, EU level institutions. You can see the qualitative result, what we would like to achieve at the end of the project, uh, at least 40 women participating in boot camps. Uh, we would like to have at least 2000 visits to the project digital platform and at least supporting 120 agribusinesses. So if you would like to learn more about the activities of the Union of Hungarian Women Association, or you would like to learn more about this GAIA project, what we are implementing at the moment, please join us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or contact us by email. I would like to thank again for the FAO to organize this event and thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, uh, Margot. Monica, I think it's a very interesting cases. Um, yeah. These presentations will be available to the participants. And as I said, we will be having recording that we will be sharing later on with the participants beyond this group. Um, uh, let me uh, move to uh, next uh, cases um, and experiences of collaboration and partnerships that help to uh, facilitate access of women working in farms to knowledge and innovation. It gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce you, Ms. Uh, Judith Hitchman, a member of uh, Nieleni Europe and Central Asia, um, Civil Society Social Movement Facilitations Committee, um, ex-president of Urgen, oh, yeah. not pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> Uh, it's, it was a global community but uh, uh, that supports agriculture work, but I'm sure you will say more about it. And um, Judith is uh, accompanied by uh, Paola. Uh, Paola is a young, willing to be farmer based in Italy and um, um, is a member of Associazione Rurale Italiana, a member of the European Coordination via Campesina. And uh, uh, Paola recently concluded her uh, formation in organic farming and uh, is now in the process of looking for a farm job in the rural area where she's trying to install. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And thank you very much for giving us the honor of being part of this panel. Could I have my PowerPoint, please? Could I have my PowerPoint, please? So women produce and cook most of our food, but they also work, so have the double burden, as has already been mentioned. But the question of women throughout the whole food system is extremely complex. I've just shown you this sli slide here to show you 
the many, many different treaties that exist and the way in which the whole food system is operating in terms of silos, land rights, workers' rights, and so on, all depend, and biodiversity, all depend on different treaties and different UN agencies. And this is a useful reference, this table, to see where you can get additional support because women's issues are cross-cutting, but we also need to work as one and try and take elements from the different areas and places where we can. We as Nyelani Europe and Central Asia represent all the different constituencies. We cover the fields of biodiversity, forests and foraging, water, pastoralists. And I just want to pause for one second. These pastoralists were in the high Atlas Mountains a long time ago. And my thoughts are with them. I wonder what's become of them. And I, I'm just sending thoughts to all the people there in Morocco. Also, fishers, indigenous peoples, consumers, and all specifically centered around our access and right to food through healthy, nutritious food and agroecological small scale food producer agriculture. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that all of the examples that we have here are based on a different form of economy. They're not based on the standard neoliberal economy. They're based on what is called social and solidarity economy. And that in April of this year, there was a very important event because the UN General Assembly voted a resolution in support of social and solidarity economy which will help us to move all our work forward. It is the A slash res slash 77281. And this is something that we need to integrate into our work through all the UN agencies. And it will help us to move women's empowerment and their local economic development further. The key concerns for women or social and food justice, because it affects women most of all, particularly in times of war and difficulty. The fact that we need urgent system change, although we're affected by the climate crisis. The care economy, which is increasingly important. Women in all their diversity must be taken into account. Agroecology and women farmers' presence connecting farmers to markets at territorial level, advocacy for policy yeah. frameworks, legislation and women as leaders. And in our networks, we have found that we have a significantly higher number of young women farmers and women leaders today. Urban rural linkages and access to and care and prevention preservation of land, water, and seeds. Now I have four success stories to bring to you that were implemented through the FAO support together with the Scuola Campesina in our region. The first in Central Asia subregion. <clears throat> the title was the Women's Initiatives Linking Producers and Urban Consumers and Their Importance in Times of Crisis, which is really vital today. It was led by ADI in Kyrgyzstan, the Agency for Development Initiative, and it involved organizations from Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. That was last April. And there were 67 people who attended the webinar. The second was the Eastern European subregion on seed saving and knowledge and agroecology. It involved organizations from Moldova, Ukraine, Belarus, and it was led by Gradina Moldovei in Moldova. 
with 50 participants. The third was in the Western Balkan subregion, where women's role in agri-food value chains in the Western Balkans, led by the Albanian network, and there were 58 participants. And the final one in the South Caucasus and Turkey subregion on agroecology for women's economic empowerment and strengthening their autonomy. And it involved Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey, and had 50 participants. If you want any additional information on those workshops, please speak with our colleague, Andrea Ferranti. He is the person. I'm just the mouth putting it out there. So thank you very much, everybody. And as somebody who was a founder of the Irish women's movement in the 1960s, I'm really proud to still be working on these issues today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Paola, would you like to say you have one minute, no more? <laughs> Unfortunately, we have these time restrictions. We need to vacate the room. Mm -hmm. I'll go very quick. Um, so today I was asked to bring uh, an example of uh, women empowerment in my experience. And um, it was not so easy to find an answer, which made me think that perhaps not so many uh, good examples exist. Um, but when I think that 90% of the land uh, in Europe and Central Asia is owned by men, then perhaps it also makes sense. Um, and to answer, I looked at a, an example from the movement I'm part of, which is La Via Campesina, representing uh, peasants uh, all over the world and rural workers. And um, it's an example of a cooperative located in a Basque country, uh, north of Spain, um, which is a great example of uh, gender inclusivity in farming. Uh, because they combined uh, parenthood and uh, collective farming, uh, to stre which strengthened eventually the collective itself. Um, in fact, following the pregnancy of uh, some members of the project, um, a reduction in working hours, as well as the introduction of new young farmers in the project, was proposed and achieved through the support of a farmer workers union. And um, what could have become an issue of gender inequality um, became an improvement in working condition, an increase in cooperative members, and a community-supported solution based on solidarity. And I chose this case study because I think that um, when we talk about um, innovation in food production, um, we always focus on digital and uh, technological innovation, and we tend to ignore what uh, social innovation is. Um, which should be instead prioritized because um, it does not rely on uh, further depletion of ecological uh, resources like much of uh, current digital technologies are, um, and is grounded in human capital, enabling the adequate environment for uh, women empowerment in food production. And of course, we cannot expect the solution to lie at the, at the farm level, but we must expect policies to support um, strong examples of women empowerment at, uh, at the farm level. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I think there are so many issues that came up at that need for the discussion. We simply have no time, but I think it's a good start. And uh, this can smoothly go on, maybe integrating, inspiring further discussions throughout the day. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all speakers and participants and um, have to announce this session closed because we need to give a floor now to the plenary session. We've been requested to do this repeatedly. Thanks a lot and we will be sharing the recording. Very interesting cases. I'm sure they will be of big interest to our counterparts in the region. Thanks a lot.